So we're going to talk tonight about the full moon and what a full moon means, what kind of energy that brings to the table. We'll also talk about this full moon being in Gemini. We'll talk a little bit about Gemini energy. We'll also talk about the Vedic astrology of this moon in Mrigashira Nakshatra. I think that we will do a breathwork practice tonight as well, bringing in this element of air that is resonating so strongly right now. And we'll also do that tarot reading that I mentioned towards the end of the transmission. So if you are ready to drop in, I am ready to drop in with you. Let's go ahead and get started. Namaste, and welcome to the Follow Your Path podcast. I'm your host, Vina Lene Rachel. I'm a moon priestess, intuitive, emotional alchemist, and channeler of the divine, and I've been diving into the world of the spiritual and metaphysical for over a decade now to self-heal my own trauma, become more emotionally stable, and cultivate my manifestation magic. I am so excited to now be bringing these same tools and techniques to you on this channel. There are a variety of ways for us to work on our higher selves. We can use practices like yoga, meditation, and breath work. We can receive energy work, crystal healing, or pull to row and oracle cards. We can call in our angels, ancestors, spirit guides, spirit animals, or more. Or maybe we find more alignment with astrology and the moon. I'm going to hold space for it all here on this channel. As you navigate each episode, I hope you find the guidance and wisdom you need to find your own path of self-healing and magic. May you become confident and courageous enough to continue to follow the path that best serves you. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel and trusting me to be a part of your unique journey. It truly is an honor to do this work and be here. Let's dive into today's episode. Okay, I think we are good to go. We are going to go ahead and get started here. But first, I am going to take a deep breath and I would love if you would join me here. So take a moment just to find a nice tall um, spine, nice supportive channel for your breath to move through. And then whenever you're ready, deep breath in through your nose, deep breath out. Let's do that again, maybe sweeping arms overhead this time on the inhale. Yeah, let's do one more breath, maybe with some sound this time. (sighs) Shake it out, loosen up, get yourself comfortable as you drop in. And welcome to our virtual full moon circle, honoring this full moon in Gemini. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Vina Lene Rachel. I am a moon priestess, an intuitive, and a channeler of the divine. And I host these moon circles every new moon and full moon for free just to help you kind of understand the energy at hand, what's going on with the moon. Maybe you're just starting to work with the moon and you want to understand how. We always provide ritual and ceremony, so you'll learn how to do that as well. And I like to talk about other things as well. I talk about Vedic astrology. I talk about um, the tarot. I have a tarot reading pulled for you tonight. And, you know, anything that else that wants to come through, we're going to let it come through tonight. But I just wanted to start by welcoming you and letting you know that you are safe here to share whatever you need. And if you are on the replay, please feel free to comment and share as well. I do go back and check those comments and respond. But if you are here live, welcome. Feel free to utilize the chat to communicate with each other and to communicate with me. And I am so excited that you are here with me sharing this lunar energy tonight. So we're going to talk tonight about the full moon and what a full moon means, what kind of energy that brings to the table. We'll also talk about this full moon being in Gemini. We'll talk a little bit about Gemini 
energy. We'll also talk about the Vedic astrology of this moon in Mrigashira Nakshatra. I think that we will do a breathwork practice tonight as well, bringing in this element of air that is resonating so strongly right now. And we'll also do that tarot reading that I mentioned towards the end of the transmission. So if you are ready to drop in, I am ready to drop in with you. Let's go ahead and get started. I always like to start the moon circle by bringing in the five elements and then calling on the guides and guardians of the five directions. So I'm going to be bringing in some tools tonight to our circle. And if you have these tools at home, you can certainly bring these into the circle tonight or just have them for your own new moon ceremony, or I'm sorry, full moon ceremony. And if you don't have these tools, that's okay. You could bring any other tools to your ceremony that you feel called, or you can just take in the energy of these that I have here on this transmission. One of the beautiful things about the ether, this place that we're connecting to in the online world, is that it withstands space and time. So even though I'm sitting here in a different house, in a different room with these material things, you feel the energy of that through this connection of the ether. So it's a really, really beautiful way for us to share energy. And the great thing about this space is it continues to grow and the energy continues to enhance the longer that this transmission is up and the more people tune in. So let's say that, you know, more and more people down the road bring in their own tools, whether it be the same ones that I have or something else, that's just going to contribute to the energy of this full moon circle and make it more powerful. So feel free to use the tools you have or just take in the energy of mine here. I'm going to be starting with the element of earth. I always like to bring in a few crystals for us to work with. And tonight I'm bringing in black moonstone. Isn't that gorgeous? That It's got a little bit of reflection from my phone there, but check out how beautiful this sphere is that I'm holding. By the way, spheres are a great shape for us to use um, to work with the moon. They also represent the circle of time, new beginnings, life, death, rebirth. All of that applies to spherical shaped crystals. And I like to use the black moonstone because it's a dark crystal. Now, if you don't have black moonstone, you could use another dark crystal like shungite or black tourmaline, black onyx. All of these, obsidian as well, obsidian could be really nice. But all of these give you the ability to do something called scrying. So this is the ability to look into something and see a reflection, kind of like staring into a crystal ball and maybe seeing some sort of answer, answers or having something come through on the other side. So you could take your darker crystal tonight. You could take time to really meditate on looking within and just kind of see what comes out of that. I have some really interesting energy coming out right now. I just feel like there are a lot of Let's be honest, I feel like there is a very strong spirit behind me, a very strong energetic spirit. I actually feel like it's it's a lot of people. So maybe these are just guides and guardians coming into our transmission tonight. But you can use your darker crystals for scrying if you're interested in doing that tonight. This moon is in Gemini, which is the sign of the twins, but also represents the energy of reflection. So this is a really good time for you to be doing some sort of mirror work, whether it be through scrying or just looking in a mirror and seeing what you discover when you take time to be with yourself. Now, the other crystal that I have is this crystal skull that I recently brought into one of our transmissions. And I love the concept of crystal skulls because they help us move into our higher consciousness. They help us to use our mind rather than our ego and also to help find deep wisdom. This moon being in Gemini, this is a time of deep reflection. This is the last full moon of 2021. So we're in a time of really looking back and kind of reflecting, contemplating. And this also may, might be a time when you're in your head, right? Because full moons are a time when we're extra high energy and we have heightened prana. So we're pulled more up into our heads. So if you're feeling a little heady right now, if you've got some brain fog going on, if you need more sense of clarity, or if you just like to move into your higher consciousness and kind of live more out of your holy self, a crystal skull can really be useful in helping you to shift into that energy. So if you don't have a crystal skull, here's the crystal skull from my side of things, and you can take in all of that energy as well. 
Okay. Moving on, we are going to bring in another element of earth in the form of a smudging stick. So this is pine sage. We've been using this one for a few of our circles and I'm definitely gonna be using it tonight to clear out the energy of 2021 because we do really, really need to purify tonight. So I'm gonna combine this earthly smudge stick with the element of fire and you'll start to see a bit of smoke come off. Here it goes. So there's that smoke or wind. Pine energy is very healing. It's very cleansing. And it helps us to purify on a deeper level than normal. So I'm going to bring this to you. And let the smoke cleanse our technology that we're using to connect. Just let the smoke be received by your energy. I'm also going to take this around and all around me and all around the tech and in the space that I'm in. So smudging helps to cleanse our spaces. It brings in that element of wind with a purifying smoke, ridding our um, environment of positive ions, ridding our environment of toxic energy, maybe any energy vampires that might be in the way. And it just creates a um, full open space for anything to come through that needs to come through and kind of eliminates the distractions. So that's almost done. I'm just gonna let that continue to burn out there. And then we're gonna bring in the element of water. So I always recommend that you just have water to consume, especially during full moons. This is also a great time to put water outside to charge. You know, we've been, um, the past couple of moons that we've had, we've had eclipses. So we haven't been able to set out our moon water or our crystals or anything to charge. And that actually changes this weekend with this full moon. So if you need to charge up some moon water for consumption, for internal purification, this is a really good time to do that as well. And in addition to having just regular H2O, I also have a few essential oils that you could be working with tonight. The first one is lavender, which is one of the most commonly used essential oils. And fun fact, lavender oil was the very first oil used in aromatherapy. So there was this um, chemist this French chemist and he was working in a perfumery and he happened to get burned somehow and he um, stuck his burned arm in a vat of lavender oil that was being used to make perfume and found that his burn healed a lot quicker than it normally would. There was no infection um, and from there he started to seek out other plant oils and see what they would do and the science of aromatherapy was born. But I digress. Lavender is a great oil to use for your throat chakra. It also helps to calm and soothe your energy. So right now I mentioned we have this high prana with the full moon. So you might need to calm or soothe your energy by bringing in a little bit of lavender. Lavender is very gentle. I always dilute my oils with a carrier oil, but you don't necessarily have to with lavender. It will stretch out your lavender and make it last longer though. Um, you could also put a drop or two in your bath, take a really relaxing bath tonight, or maybe just throw it in your diffuser to create that calming effect as you breathe it all in. But lavender works great for the throat chakra and it also helps us to work with the energy of honesty, which we're gonna talk about tonight. Now we're dealing with the full moon being in the air sign of Gemini. So I also wanted to bring in an oil that works with our heart, which is where our air element moves in our body, our heart and our lungs. So I'm bringing in the oil of Yaling Yaling, or it might be a ling a ling, depending on how you pronounce it. But this oil, Yaling Yaling, really works on the heart. It helps us move from the heart, it helps us breathe through the heart, and it's a really refreshing oil. It has a very soft scent to it. It kind of smells like daffodils, or I say it, it reminds me of the smell of like babies, like baby powder, or baby things. And it reminds us to kind of move from that innocence of the heart. It's also a harmonizing oil. So if you're feeling a little overactive with your energy, it can bring you down to equilibrium. If you're feeling like you have a case of the blahs or you're a low frequency, it can help uplift you into your frequency um, where you feel more harmonious. So that's one of the great powers of Yalingling as well. 
Feel free to use that one in your circle tonight. And finally, I have peppermint. So peppermint, we know, is the oil of buoyancy. It's really great for the throat chakra. It's gonna help to open up your throat for communication and expression, which is really important right now. It's great for digestion. This is a time we're in the holiday season. We're indulging a little bit more. If you need some help with digestion, you might wanna try using peppermint. You can dilute this, rub this on your belly, and it can help you with that digestion process. It can also help to ease anything going on in your tummy. It has to do with emotional processing as well. So if you have those emotional knots in your stomach from worry, anxiety, just anything causing something in your gut, you might wanna utilize peppermint to help open up your solar plexus chakra. Now I'm just gonna smell this just to kind of open up my airways. Oh, it smells really good. I do suggest you heavily dilute like one or two drops and then a lot of carrier oil if you use peppermint topically. I prefer to put it in my diffuser or just smell it right out of the bottle. Also be careful when you're handling peppermint to make sure and wash your hands, wipe your hands after, and don't like touch your eyes or touch any sensitive mucosal membranes because it can have a really um, powerful effect and kind of uh, wake up your senses, so to say. But peppermint is good for our throat. We're working with the throat chakra tonight. We're working with emotions. So I wanted to bring that one in as well. So the final element, the fifth element is the ether. I already mentioned this. It's a space that we're connecting to through the online world and it withstands space and time. So the energy here will only continue to grow. And this is a really powerful space for us to bring any messages through from the other side. So I sit here as a channeler, as an open space for things to move through. And I hope that you connecting to this ether space serves you and you hear you know whatever you need to hear to help feel more supported with this full moon so with that i'm going to take a deep breath i'm going to grab a drink of water i'm going to clear my throat and then we're going to call on the guides and guardians of the five directions give me just a minute here we had a big if you're not from southeast iowa i'm in southeast iowa we had a big temperature spike yesterday and the day before where it got up to the 70s and ever since you can hear it. My sinuses are so stuffy. So thank you for bearing with me on that. Talking about the element of air and I can't fully breathe. <laughs> okay. So let's call in the guides and guardians of the fight directions. If you'd like to join me in this prayer, feel free. I'm going to take a deep breath to get started. We call on the guides and guardians of the East to join our full moon circle tonight, bringing in the element of air that moves so strongly with this Gemini moon and this feeling of new beginnings, letting go of this year. We're preparing for the new and we know that so much is on the potential of the horizon ahead of us. And so we, are excited about this breath of fresh air and we thank the guides and guardians of the east for being in our circle tonight we also call on the guides and guardians of the south with the element of fire transformative energy that burns away what no longer serves it helps us to really shift something and not feel the same as we did before we thank you for the fire of the full moon that burns and shines down upon us now. And we thank the guides and guardians of the South for being here tonight in our circle. We also welcome in the guides and guardians of the West with the element of water. Always affected by lunar energy, our internal tides, the tides of the planetary oceans. Water is life. Water is cleansing, water is purifying. Water helps us to be fluid and move through our life with ease. So we thank the guides and guardians of the West and their element of water for being in our circle tonight. We also call in the guides and guardians of the North with the element of earth, our ancestors, those that have been here before us, the generations ahead of us. 
We stand here in this present space aware that our energy impacts the collective of this planet. And we thank the guides and guardians of the North for being in our circle tonight. We also call on the guides and guardians of the fifth element, the spirit realm, the cosmos, anything beyond our planet, angels, deities, archangels, cosmic races, cosmic beings, light bodies, maybe even things beyond our comprehension, yet we still welcome them into our circle tonight for they bring us great knowledge and wisdom and ways to live and learn. We thank the guides and guardians of the spirit realm for being in our circle tonight. With that, our circle is sealed and we are ready to talk about everything that's going on right now. And if you have any questions about the current astrology at hand or just anything, feel free to utilize the chat and put that in there. I'm happy to answer if I can. Or maybe somebody else can answer too, anybody that's on here. So let's talk about the full moon in case you have no idea what a full moon is or what it means. What you need to know is that right now, If my earthly body was planet Earth and the moon was on one side and the sun was on the other side, that's what it would look like in outer space right now. The sun is shining down onto the Earth, onto the moon, and the light on that moon is being reflected back to the Earth. That's why we see this bright, shining, circular object outside. And whenever the moon is illuminated in this fashion, whenever we're in a full moon, we're also increased in prana, life force energy. We're pulled up to the moon and we're pulled up into the energy of our inhale. So think about if you just inhaled a lot. It's kind of a hyperventilation, right? You get a little dizzy in your head. You might even pass out if you continue to do it. This full moon is reminding us that, hey, energy is heightened right now. Energy is strong. You might be in your head. Things might feel overwhelming, but it's all okay. It's part of nature, and you're just responding to it. So most people know that full moons kind of make people crazy, or at least that's the perception. If you've ever worked with kids in the service industry or in the health industry, especially emergency rooms or labor and delivery for babies, you probably know that full moons affect our energy as human beings, as living beings on this planet, natural beings operating here on this earth. And because of this heightened energy and this heightened prana, we can be a little distracted. We can kind of forget about our true selves, our heart, our highest frequency. And sometimes we act out of a lesser version of ourselves. Sometimes we get clumsy and we just make mistakes or we lash out, we're quick to react. And other times we're just not paying attention and we injure. So full moons bring a lot of energy. And then depending on what sign the moon is in, you might be impacted in a different way. So this moon is in the element of air through the sign of Gemini. So think about a full moon being fully illuminated, reflecting the fiery energy and light of the sun. And then combining that with the energy of air. What do you get when you mix air and fire? More fire, right? So there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of energy with this full moon. And I'm sure you're feeling it if you've been on the collective at all. I had yoga class tonight. And when I walked in, typically like I sit down, things start to quiet down. You know, we start class. I sat down, people just kept talking. Talk, 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 talk. Everybody's talking, everybody's gabbing, everybody's high energy, excited. The holidays are coming. You can really feel it. And then also there is that energy of talking, conversation, because Gemini is the element of air. And how does air move through our body? Through the breath and through the vocal cords. And also a little bit through gas. But you might feel right now too. You might be a little gassy from the overindulging in all of the food that you don't normally put into your diet. Side note, during full moons, 
yeast and parasites are more active. So your gut health needs to be a priority during full moon portals. Especially if you're dealing with this stuff already in your body, you want to be careful to pay attention up to like your cravings right now. Do you crave alcohol? Do you crave sugar right now? You know, if you're craving that during a full moon, it could be an indicator that something is off in your energy. You might have a candida, you know, imbalance. You might have some sort of parasite. Just something to pay attention to with your energy. So if your digestion is off, you got some extra air, some extra gas, use that peppermint I mentioned, <laughs> maybe a little ginger too. But it's this air element that moves through words, through voice, through conversation that's really at a head right now. And you might find yourself in a lot of conversations this weekend, especially with Geminis or other air signs. So I'm a Libra air sign. And I'm talking more than normal. I'm talking a little bit different on this transmission. You guys know, for those that have tuned into my moon circles for a long time, been doing these for several years, you might feel like this one's a little different than some of the other ones I've done. You know, my energy shows up different depending on the moon sign and what kind of energy is here as well. So this air sign has me talking, me wanting to bring forth a lot of conversation, but it's all high frequency, right? Like we're all here coming together to talk about high frequency things. And that's important to prioritize during this full moon portal. So this is a super social moon. You're probably going to be out and about family gatherings, social gatherings, friends misses, holiday parties. Maybe you're just shopping. You're out in public more. Take deep breaths. Slow down. Be really mindful of your energy right now and keep it at a high frequency. Be careful in these conversations that you engage in. I was talking about this in my class tonight. You know, this air energy makes us want to talk, makes us want to conversate, maybe even wants us to get a little philosophical or intellectual, right? It's that Gemini air energy in the head and that extra prana pulling us up into our mind as well. But also know that all of this talking can also lead to lower frequency conversations because that's where our ego gets involved. So if you find yourself in a conversation that you don't feel comfortable engaging in this weekend or during this lunar energy, make the choice to walk away or take back the power and control and shift the conversation to a better topic. You know, you always have the free will to decide if you're going to participate or not. You know, you might not be able to prevent the conversation from happening, but you can choose how to react to it. And that's really important with this moon in Gemini because Gemini is all about relating. It's all about relationships. It's the sign of the cosmic twins. And sometimes this means looking at others, you know, looking at how we relate to our friends, our family, our loved ones, looking at how we reflect our own stuff onto others, but also looking at our relationship with ourself. So it's important right now to think about how you're talking to yourself. Are you allowing your energy to be penetrated in a negative way? Are you initiating conversations like gossip or complaining or talking about others that you shouldn't or talking about all of these low frequency things that are circulating through the earth right now? Are you talking about things that bring up the topics of fear, limitation, you know, things that hold back your spiritual consciousness? It might be you. It might be somebody else. If somebody else is initiating these conversations that you don't want to be a part of, are you going to engage in them? Or are you going to shift or walk away? So pay attention to how you're relating to people during this full moon portal, because how you allow the energy to be exchanged will set a standard for that relationship moving forward. So this full moon in Gemini, this is the last full moon of 2021. Full moons are a time of release, that sun, that fire energy reflecting off the moon that represents the fire energy of burning away what no longer serves. Full moons arrive halfway through that 29-ish day lunar cycle. It's a time for us to check in and say, hey, how are we doing as we work on our goals and try to make our dreams come true? How are we doing as we work to create more joy and live from a higher frequency self? You know, how are these things doing as we're halfway through the lunar cycle? We check in 
and we adapt accordingly. If we're not feeling good, if we're feeling a blockage towards our goals, if something's holding back our dreams, we try to release it. We try to transform it. We try to keep it from affecting us in the same way. So if you have relationships right now that don't serve you, that don't support you, that don't support your greatest good or your spiritual consciousness, or really just don't make you happy, it's time to release those relationships. Or maybe you restructure the bond. Maybe you retie the cord after you sever it. <clears throat> maybe you cut it completely. There's going to be a lot around relationships come up, not only with this full moon, but also over the next couple of months. So tomorrow, Venus goes retrograde in Capricorn until January 29th. So really, through the end of January, and from now through the end of the year, we are going to have the planet of love and relationships spinning backwards, making us reflect on where we exchange our energy, causing us to maybe shift and redirect or change the way that we're interacting with somebody. Venus is also related to money, worthiness, and a little bit of what we do for work. So if you find yourself at a crossroads with your professional life, or maybe you have an opportunity come your way, these are going to be things that you might want to shift into because they support your joy and your value, and they will increase your value and help your energy to expand. You might also find it this time because Venus is going retrograde in Capricorn, a sign that heavily deals with structure, government, and money. You might feel differently about these things as well. I want you to know that it's okay to change your mind, to change your point of view, okay? There's a lot of opinions circulating in the world right now, and we all have them. And there's a strong force at hand to try to change some of our opinions. And that's okay too. Because maybe if we open our minds up to it and we open our hearts up to the other side, as we do the research, as we start to seek out more information for ourselves and more clarity and understanding, we might find ourselves shifting our point of view or shifting our truth. You know, Gemini is the sign of the twins because it wants us to see both sides of the situation, both sides of the story, both potential circumstances playing out. So this is a time for you to trust in what's going to be playing out at hand, but also kind of give yourself the time to think about the undoing of the things that are happening and ask yourself if you can be okay with it. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I kind of got off on a tangent there. But, you know, this planet of money. You might find yourself thinking about money in a different way. I know a lot of people this year are really shopping small, supporting small. Side note, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everybody that has purchased an offering, a gift certificate, something from me and supported me. Because you support me and my family. This is it. This is my team. It's me and my family. <laughs> but you support my door staying open at my studio. You support these free online moon circles. You know, I would not be able to give away so much free stuff if I didn't have that support from you. So I just want to say thank you for doing that. But I also want to mention, you know, people are finding new ways to find value in things, right? Like we're gifting old family heirloom recipes or sourdough starters or we're um, writing people love letters for Christmas instead of buying them things that are going to end up in a landfill. We're creating experiences. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can find worth and value. And honestly, it's always the things that aren't the material that end up being the most memorable. So during this Venus retrograde, all the way until the end of January, ask yourself how you're feeling about material things right now. Ask yourself how you're feeling about money. And maybe shift your money mindset and start to look at everything around you that makes you feel abundant and everything that you can be grateful for. Because Capricorn has to do with structure and organization, 
Whenever Venus is in Capricorn, you might find yourself kind of needing to get your life together to help yourself become more successful. So pay attention to the things that are calling you to take care of. Maybe you need to clean up your office. Maybe you just need to get your um, your budget in order, do your taxes, you know, just lots of different things around structure, organization, money, you ruling your life, kind of putting things into boxes. All of that energy is going to play out until the end of January. But also this whole thing about relationships. So pay attention to what starts to come up with this full moon because this full moon in Gemini is going to be the initiator of all of this. Pay attention to what comes up in your relationships over the next six to seven weeks and then make the adjustments accordingly because whatever you allow in your life relationship wise, whatever you whatever cords you cut, you know, whatever you restructure, like everything is going to kind of stay, stay that way until um this eclipse series is over. So things are going to stay that way for the next like 18 months or so. So you really want to make sure that you are giving your energy to the people that are important and people are, you know, you're exchanging your energy with people that actually see you as valuable. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's move on to the eastern side of the world for a moment. And let's talk a little bit about the Vedic astrology of this moon. I'm no expert in Vedic astrology, but when I traveled to India four years ago, I came across this side of interpreting the cosmos. And I find it really interesting. And I also find that the energy tends to align with the astrology of the Western side of the world. So in the Eastern side of the world, this moon is in Mrigashira Nakshatra. That's M-R-I-G-A. S-H-I-R-A, Mrigashira Nakshatra. And this is a lunar mansion represented by the head of a deer or a stag, kind of a running stag and the head of that stag in the process. It's also known as the searching star. This is a time when we are soul searching. Another year is coming to an end. A new year is upon us. We find ourselves reminiscing on the past, reflecting on the past, maybe even having a little bit of remorse. But this Mrigashira Nakshatra says, hey, don't linger on the past. Don't stay attached to what ties you down. Let your energy move forward. Let your energy keep going. You know, just as the deer returns to the herd, you're working to find your soul family. You're working on yourself to create a better life. And you're working on your relationships right now so that you can surround yourself with your soul family and the people that love and support you. If you find yourself soul searching right now for happiness, Mrigashira Nakshatra says, direct your energy to what brings you joy and nothing else. Don't look back. The predator is behind you. The evil, the shadow side, all of those lower frequencies that tell you to live in regret, that's what's behind you and you're not going that way. So move forward. Let your energy go farther. Mrigashira Nakshatra is also ruled by the planet Mars. This is the planet of masculine energy, the yang. It's a planet of war and work. And this lunar mansion might be indicating a shift in your professional life again. This might also just mean you kind of taking a look at the work you've done and the work that you want to do in the future. Energetically, do you want to continue to navigate the same shadow work and learn the same lessons? Have you uncovered the wisdom? Are you ready to move forward and learn new things for your greater evolution? You know, there's no right or wrong. It's up to you, but it's something to consider right now. With all of this energy to take action, this is also a really good time for you to shift, to develop new habits, to start making choices that support a better you. When Mars is at hand playing into things, we have a lot of courage. And we also have empowerment to really go to battle when we need to. So again, I feel like this is applying to the social situations that are going to arise over the next week or two with the holiday season. You know, you have the courage to control 
the interaction, right? You have the courage to control the conversation. You have the ability to take back your power when somebody is sucking away your energy. Just make sure that you embrace that. Don't be afraid to let that out. Self-expression is really important right now. So I don't have much else to say about the eastern side of the world, but just know that this stag or this deer head, it also represents you know, being the hunter or going after what we want, being the huntress. We are still in Sagittarius season. When we're in a Gemini moon, the opposite of that is Sagittarius. So anytime we're in full moon energy, we're in the zodiac sign opposite of the current sun season. We're in the solar season of Sagittarius, the archer, the huntress, the wonderluster. A little bit of the self-starter, kind of like independent hermit that can be on their own. And when we have this deer or this head of the deer coming into play with Mrigashira and Nakshatra, we're being reminded to, you know, kind of point our arrow towards our goals and really follow through with it. Like take aim and follow through. And don't be afraid to not stop until you get there. So we usually set those New Year's resolutions, right? I'm not a fan of setting them, by the way. Although we do have a new moon on January 2nd this year. So our next new moon is in Capricorn on January 2nd, right at the beginning of the year. So it might be a healthy time for you to set some resolutions, make some shifts, develop some new routines. But honestly, you have a lot more support to do it right now. And I've been saying this with a lot of the moons, but really it is the energy kind of not on January 1st that that supports you to move forward and kind of meet your goals. So with this full moon, if you're ready to release habits that don't serve you or behaviors that don't serve you or just anything that you're ready to shift to kind of um, to help you go after your goals and your dreams, this would be the time to take action. You've got this Mars planetary influence that says really, really go for it. And then you've got that Venus retrograde playing in starting tomorrow that says, hey, yeah, this is a good time to maybe look at how you're doing things and change the way moving forward. So I'd like us to do a breathwork exercise. I think that that would really serve us. I want to mention that Gemini energy is all about the throat chakra. This is where we move the air through our vocal cords. But our throat chakra also has to do with expression. It's not just communication and conversation, but it's the actual expression of how we display ourselves and show ourselves to the world, how we set boundaries, how we allow this energy to be exchanged. So when you have this energy moving through the throat chakra, there's also a little bit of the quality of honesty that needs to shine through. This full moon in Gemini is asking you if you're being honest with yourself and if you're showing up authentically and honestly to others. Are you fully expressing yourself? Are you fully expressing your needs and your truths? When something's not okay with you, are you expressing that as well? If you are not doing these things, this full moon is asking you to embrace moving forward with that energy now. Now, if you already strongly express yourself, it might be just the opposite. If you find yourself running your mouth too much, overpowering conversations, letting your mouth get you into trouble, letting your mouth lash out, maybe you just feel yourself kind of have this overactive throat chakra. Ground in more silence, more stillness, more internal conversation. You know, pay attention to what you want to say out loud that comes through in your mind. I've kind of gotten out of it since I've had my kid, but one of the regular practices I used to do is once a month, I would take a vow of silence from sunup to sundown. And when you take a vow of silence, it really makes you think about the things you were going to say a lot of times, it's not the greatest stuff. It's not stuff that comes from your higher self. So if you find that you have an overactive throat chakra right now, excessive air moving through you, then I would advise that you would spend some time this weekend with this full moon being more quiet and taking time for yourself to retreat and just listen to what comes up in your mind whenever you don't allow it to move out um, to the external. 
So with that being said, let's nourish our throat chakra with a little bit of breath. I want you to do some ujjayi breathing tonight. This is that gentle whisper of the throat. It's known as a warrior's breath or a power breath. It's also a nice sigh for stress relief. But I want to start by saying if any breath work you do does not serve you or makes you feel off in your energy, please discontinue it and just breathe in a way that's more comfortable. But if you'd like to join me in this breath work, you're going to breathe in and out through your nose. And as you exhale, you're going to constrict your throat, press your tongue back, and create a little bit of a gentle whisper. So it's going to feel like you're fogging a mirror in front of you with your mouth closed. Kind of that sound with the mouth closed. So let's try this. Deep breath in and out. Create that gentle whisper. Vibrate the throat chakra. Do it a few more times. I have some sound that wanted to come through. If you have sound that wants to come through, let it come through. One more. And then just relax, return to normal breathing. So a couple of sensations can occur. The first is you might feel a little bit of extra heat. This heat is created to help you burn away what doesn't serve in the throat chakra. These things that move through that aren't of your greatest good that we just talked about. When we constrict the throat, we also move into our vagus nerve. We hack a cranial nerve that's responsible for turning on our autonomic nervous system and helping us move into that parasympathetic state of rest and digest. When we do this breath work, it helps us to calm down and sigh and breathe things out and release tension. And it also helps us to move down into that apana energy, the energy at the bottom of the breath that's just the opposite of the prana that's so heightened with this full moon right now. It also still allows you to bring some sound and sensation and maybe even a little bit of voice and vocal quiver, um, vocal cord quiver <laughs> whenever you're um, breathing and being in silence, right? So we're, we're not talking, our mouth is closed, but we're still creating some sound to really move the energy. And that might be something that you need right now. So if you're in this full moon in Gemini and you're feeling like your mouth is being a little overactive right now, take some time for this Ujjayi breath. And calm your mind, move down into your body, into these internal spaces instead. This is also good for bringing more energy into the throat chakra for that communication and self-expression. So if you're feeling a little bit weak in those energies, if you feel like you're not expressing yourself the way that you should, this Ujjayi breath will help vibrate that energy center and bring more power to it. So just a quick breath work practice tonight, nothing major, but I just wanted to offer you that pranayama. By the way, pranayama is yogic breath work that stretches, lengthens, or controls our life force energy. So when we do these breath work practices, we really are controlling our vitality, our life force, our mood, our emotions, our prana, our overall auric field. We impact it all. Even if you're just doing a short five to 10 breaths, or maybe it's just three sacred breaths, it all has a powerful impact on your energy. So feel free at this point, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you have anything else you wanna mention, please put it there as well. Otherwise, we're gonna move into the Tarot reading for tonight. And then I'll release the guides and guardians and we'll be finished with our moon circle. I want to start with a deep breath. I always like to slow down before I do these readings. And I also want to mention really quickly that I do have 20% off all of my Tarot readings if you book by the end of the year. So you can book for a later date. You just have to book by the end of the year and you get 20% off. So if you're interested in doing a reading with me, I do them online. I also do them in person. Uh, let me know. Send me a message and we will get you something booked and save you that 20%. So let me drop in with a deep breath to get started. Just thanking the cards for showing us what we need to see, telling us what we need to hear. 
helping us to understand what we need to know. We know that the cards do not lie. We trust in what comes through. And I thank you for letting me be this channeler of these messages to the collective tonight. So I typically pull a past, present, and future card. I did that tonight as well. For our past card, I pulled the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups is very emotionally stable. Pulling this as a past card shows me that we've been through a lot. We've gotten a better handle on our emotions now. We're not reacting so radically. We're not letting fear and uncertainty set in in the same way. We've got more control on it. And when we're holding the cups in our hands, we might also really be learning how to not let those emotions spill over. So I talked about the lashing out or the overpowering, overbearing of conversation, not fully expressing ourselves. You know, all of these things um, are things that we have to work on. But the Queen of Cups notices that we are doing the work and tells us now that we are definitely more emotionally stable than we were in the past, even if we're still feeling overwhelmed now. Also notice her green dress symbolizing her moving from her heart chakra. You know, she's sitting on her throne. She's not standing on it. She's not, you know, being really aggressive on it. She's humbled. She's been through a lot. She's been through challenging times herself. She's learned how to handle her emotions. And she understands that others might be going through those things right now. And so she sits down to be on their level. We have to start looking at ourselves and how we relate to the world around us. And we have to start navigating it all with a little bit more empathy, sympathy, and understanding. Life is hard for a lot of people right now. Life is super emotional for a lot of people right now. And it's probably the same for you too, but we're all going through challenging times. We're all fighting our own battles right now. And it's important to relate to that with others in as many ways as possible. I think that this is a time where we're definitely not agreeing wholeheartedly on a lot of things. And it's okay to disagree, but do we have to be vile? Do we have to shut ourselves off from each other? Do we have to be cruel? I don't think we do. I think that we can set boundaries if we need to, but I also think that we can be a little bit more open-minded and open-hearted to each other's experiences and what they've been through. We're all reacting from our own programming and the things that we've been through. So remember that when you're interacting with others right now. I do also think a little bit that this Queen of Cups represents Mother Mary, as in the mother of Jesus. You know, we're in the time of Christmas and the celebration of the birth of Christ and this Queen of Cups holding this golden Holy Grail in her hand does represent that Christ consciousness and the Holy Grail lineage. So remember right now to live from your holy self, look back on your past when maybe you weren't your spiritual holy self and make the commitment moving forward to live in a higher consciousness, not only right now, but for the rest of the entire year and all the time moving forward. When you start to rule from your heart and from this Christ consciousness, you don't feel the need to be so powerful. Everything kind of comes to you with ease. For the present card, I pulled Judgment. And interestingly enough, it's represented by the number 22 and the planet of Pluto. <laughs> so we're moving into 2022. This is the last full moon of 2021. There is a lot of judgment at play. We're probably judging this past year, these past few years, judging our lives, judging the way things played out. But this angel is saying, don't judge yourself so much, but just find the wisdom and move forward. You know, she's blowing a trumpet of celebration because 
There's a whole new world to come. And we have the chance to begin again. And this time of the year, as we wrap up an old year and bring in a new year, we bring in that concept of second chances. We develop new habits. We get back into routine. We start to regain structure over our life. And this planet of Pluto ruling this card says, yes, it's time to take back control. It's time to take back control of our energy. It's time to navigate these unknown waters with the wisdom that we have gained. And it's time to trust that we're protected as we navigate it all. Even when we feel alone, even when we feel like we're journeying through the underworld in the most challenging of times, there are always light beings around us and there's always that light to return to. So if you find yourself right now in this full moon, reflecting on your past with remorse, finding yourself attached in a way that you don't need to, in a way that's unhealthy, give yourself permission to let go and know that you are creating space for something bigger, better, and new. For the feature card, I pulled Temperance, the angel of time, standing in the river of time with her foot right in the present. Every present moment is a gift. And as we go into the future, it's going to be more important to recognize that and really see the value that every moment has to offer us. This angel of time is pouring from cup to cup. This kind of uh, reminds me of the transfer of prana and apana, controlling the breath, moving from this deep inhale and deep exhale, you know, deep breaths through things, through challenging times, finding more temperance, finding more patience, and also finding more patience as we Continue to discover more about our own internal selves and our own waters and our emotions. The um, pouring from cup to cup here on the card does represent emotional alchemy. So we might start to feel differently about things from our past as we move forward. Or we might learn to react in a different way as we move into the future. This temperance card is represented literally by Sagittarius. And the number 14, which is a number of growth. So Sagittarius, again, bringing in that energy of the huntress, the hunter, the archer, somebody that goes after what they want. But maybe being patient along the way. Think about the hunter that has its game or its prey come across. It doesn't just fire the arrow haphazardly. It doesn't just fire it all of a sudden without any thought, right? They, they pull back the arrow and they wait patiently. They wait for that target to just line up before they release. Or maybe the target moves on. They, they didn't have an opportunity to take it, but they know another target is coming along the way. So Sagittarius energy, especially in a future card, that reminds us to continue to go after our goals Go after our heart's desires, you know, aim our arrow true, but be patient along the way. And if things don't meet your expectations, like if expectations do not come to reality, trust that something bigger and better is on its way. You know, this is the angel of time in the river of time, past flowing into present, flowing into future. If things that you expected in your past do not come to fruition into your present, stay open to your dreams, maybe restructure how you're going after them and believe that you can still make them come true because you can, but you've got to breathe through it and you've got to make some decisions on how you handle your energy and how you respond. So just to recap, past card, Queen of Cups, we've been through a lot. We're now handling our emotions. We're better equipped for what's going to come. And we're learning to live out of a more spiritual side of ourselves, move into a holy consciousness, learning to be sympathetic and empathetic to others, and learn to listen to each other's stories so that we have more understanding. The present card brings us judgment, an angel blowing the trumpet, Celebrating all that's ending and all that's to come, new beginnings, second chances. 
the number 22 inviting us into taking back control of our life, this planet of Pluto coming into the card. Take back your power. Take back your energy and how you exchange it with others and reevaluate so that you don't find yourself judging experiences as you move forward into the future. Everything feels good. Everything feels like it's working out. Finally, for the future, we have temperance, the angel of time and the river of time, bringing in the energy of the number 14 for growth and Sagittarius. It's time to be patient. It's time to take deep breaths. Our breath is one of the most powerful tools we have. It's time to utilize that tool and let ourselves not only go after our goals, but be open to all possibilities that come our way. Hmm. I hope these messages from the cards serve you. I do a written reading and interpretation as well. I did that early this morning and put it up on my website. So if you wanna to go to vinalinae.com, you can read all about this tarot reading and there might've been some things included there that didn't come through just now. You can also go to vinalinae.com to read all about the moon. In addition to hosting these free moon circles, I also write about the moon and post it underneath the moon musing section of my website. And then speaking of Sagittarius energy, with us being in Sagittarius season, if you also go to my website and click on astrology, you'll see the astrological insights for this Sagittarius season, just in case you wanna read up on that. So I have lots of ways for you to find out what's going on with this full moon in addition to this transmission, but I hope that you have some more insight now, some more guidance and direction as you move through the rest of this lunar cycle over the next couple of weeks, as you wrap up this year and prepare for 2022. I am happy to answer any questions if you have them now, although I don't think we do have any. I haven't seen anything come through, so I'm assuming we probably don't, but if we do, put it in the chat. And that's really all I have for you tonight. I'm going to do our prayer to release the guides and guardians from our circle. And then if there are no other questions or comments, I'm going to sign off tonight. So I'll um, tell you real quick, if you want to tune into our next lunar circle, that is going to be on January 2nd, celebrating the new moon in Capricorn. That's going to be on a Sunday. And if you're in the central time zone, we're going to be getting together here on Facebook, same place at 730 central time. So same place, same time on Sunday, January 2nd to honor the new moon in Capricorn. First new moon of 2022. It'll be a really good one for setting intentions. And I just want to say thank you for joining me on this circle tonight. I do appreciate you being here and sharing your energy with me, um, sharing your energy with the collective, coming here to better understand what's going on and to work on yourself. Imagine if we all did this. Imagine if we all came together every moon and full moon and new moon and checked in and kind of paid attention to how we felt and made adjustments accordingly, it'd probably be a lot more peaceful of a world and a lot better place. But you know what? We can start with ourselves. That's what this full moon in Gemini is all about. It's about doing the things in ourselves and letting it reflect out onto the collective. So, you know, thank yourself for being here tonight and doing this work for your own spiritual evolution. So I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to go into prayer, release the guides and guardians, and then we will seal our circle. Now releasing the guides and guardians of the fifth element, the spirit realm, the ether, the cosmos. Thank you, cosmic races and light beings and Entities of a higher frequency for being here in our moon circle tonight, for inspiring us to be better and do better, for helping us to tap into a higher consciousness. We ask that you continue to guide us through our dreams, our meditations, our intuition, any other liminal spaces that we can tap into. But for now, we release you from our circle and we thank you 
for being here. And we also release the guides and guardians of the north with the element of earth. We release our ancestors and those that have been here and walked this planet before us. We release the energy of the seven generations ahead. It's always in the top of our mind, but we release it now as we remain in the present. But we also thank the guides and guardians of the North for the lessons we've learned from their experiences, for the wisdom we've gained as they continue to guide us from the other side. And we ask you to continue to guide us as we move beyond this circle, helping to heal our bloodlines, helping to heal the generational collective, helping to create a better earth and better planet for future generations ahead. For now, we release you from our circle and we thank you guides and guardians of the North for being here. We also thank the guides and guardians of the West and their element of fire. Sorry, water. <laughs> that purifying water of life, the river of time, reminding us to stay ever present and fluid, to go with the flow of what comes at hand. We thank you for helping us to handle our emotions and our own water energy. And we thank the guides and guardians of the West with the element of water for being in our circle tonight. We thank the guides and guardians of the South with the element of fire. Transformative energy shining brightly down from the full moon right now, helping us to burn away what doesn't serve, helping us to ignite our own fires and drive for change. We're thankful for the energy of fire to take action on our goals, our dreams, and ourselves. And we thank the guides and guardians of the South with the element of fire for being in our circle tonight. We also release the guides and guardians of the East with the element of air, swirling around so strongly with this Gemini full moon. We thank you for deep ujjayi breaths to ground, for a breath of fresh air and the concept of new beginnings. We thank you for the new year ahead and all of the excitement to come in this new earth and new golden age. And we thank the guides and guardians of the East for being in our circle tonight. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, anybody else that was here in the circle. Thank you to all of those that are tuning in to the replay, whether you're catching this on Facebook, YouTube, my website, or the Follow Your Path podcast. I appreciate you. I love you. I'm holding space for you, and I support all you are ready to create in 2022 until we meet again for the new moon in capricorn may we all be happy may we all be healthy may we all know peace and may we all feel loved and so it is and so it is and so it is blessed be moon brothers moon sisters namaste I hope today's message served you. If you enjoy the Follow Your Path podcast, I would love for you to leave a review. As a thank you, every month I do a drawing from the reviews and I choose one person to win a free one hour, one-on-one -on -one soul coaching session with me. This can be done in person or online depending on where you are. I also feature reviews on my website and social media, so thank you for the feedback and the testimonials. It truly is an honor to be here. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to meeting with you again in the next episode.